Hey class, in this video, we're going to be adding enemies into our Godot project. This section was originally part of the previous lab on obstacles and colliders, but there was a little too much information to pack into one lab. So I split them up into two parts. So we're kind of continuing with the same concepts, layers and masks and different types of colliders. But this time we'll be making a moving enemy. And so it'll be able to move. We'll have a few different options about how it moves in the scene. So for this one, we're going to keep working with the code that we wrote in the previous video. But now we have this new obstacle moving script, which has a bunch more features and attributes that we can add to an enemy in our project. So let's get started. So we left off in the previous lab, obstacles and collisions, where we have a couple of static obstacles. So we're just going to start off from here. If you haven't done that lab, you should go back and do it or go over the setup to get started with the moving obstacles. We're going to be using the same layers and masks and the same code that we added to the player controller and scene manager. In this case, we're just going to be adding the moving obstacles and the script that makes them work. Let's add a couple moving obstacles onto our other platforms, and then we'll go over the colliders with those as well. So this is a bit more complicated because there's more possibilities. And so we'll go over each one of these steps with our obstacle moving. So I'm going to go back to my scenes folder and go to obstacle moving. And you can see we have a whole bunch of stuff in here. I have this like snake animation in my animated sprite. You can use this as a default for now. Or if you've done the obstacles and enemies project in the art tier, you can add your own art or if you want to collaborate with somebody. And so my snake has a dies, a idle and a walk animation. And then we have a whole bunch of colliders. We also have a ray cast, which we'll go over in a minute, but let's just get started and look at some of the basics. So I'm going to hide a bunch of this stuff in here and we're just going to start. So the obstacle moving is a kinematic body. It's like the player in that it can move on platforms. It can jump up and down. We can apply physics to it. And so that way we can have the snake moving back and forth across the platforms. So then it has a collider here and the shape for this one is a circle shape because the art is more similar to a circle. And if we go to our obstacle moving and look at the collision, you can see that it's actually masked to hit the player as well as the platform. So the snake can land on the platform and move around, or the snake can hit the player. You could actually turn the player off for this one. We don't really need it. It's kind of up to you. In some cases, the player will stand on top of the snake versus overlapping with the snake. Um, so it's kind of a aesthetic preference there. And then we have this obstacle body for the kinematic body. So the obstacle body is going to interact with the platforms of the player, but the other colliders on the snake are just going to interact with the player. They don't need to interact with the obstacles. We should be able to actually put a couple snakes in this scene. So let's go to obstacles. I'm going to add a child instance and go to obstacle moving. I'll duplicate this a couple times. So we have, oops, let's lock up our player again. So here we have a snake. Let's put a snake down here. I'm going to duplicate that and put one over here. And let's put one more up here. I think we have enough stuff to test for a few different options there. And so let's go back to our snake scene. So let's go ahead and get started writing our script. So I'm going to go to the obstacle moving the main node and then go to the inspector and go to script and I'm going to click new script. And again, I want to make sure this is in the scripts folder. It always brings me to that scenes folder. We want to make sure it's in here. And it's called obstacle moving, which is good because that's the name of our obstacle. And everything else looks good. So I'm going to click create. And so now we have extends kinematic body 2D. So let's get the snake moving. We're going to actually have an export var is moving for the snake. So the snake isn't always going to be moving because we're going to add some functionality where the snake won't move until it detects the player. And so we'll say export var is moving and we'll default that to true. And then we need a speed just like we have with our player. So we'll say export var speed equals let's let's make it a little slower than our player. So let's say 50. Since it's an export variable, we can make snakes that have different speeds or we can change the speed later. So those are some things that we'll be able to set in the editor. And then we need some of our internal variables as well. So we'll have some internal variables and these are going to be really simple to the player controller. So if we go back to the player controller and look at what we needed for that, we needed speed, gravity, jump force. And then for our internal variables or our private variables, we needed things like is alive, velocity, 
is jumping. So let's just start with our velocity. So we have var velocity equals vector two. And then we also need an is alive variable. So we'll say is alive. We also need some gravity. I'm going to set this to the same thing as the player, but I'm not going to make this an export variable. I don't think we really need this with our obstacles, but you could make this an export variable if you want to also change the gravity of your obstacles. So we're going to add a few more variables later, but this will be good enough for us to get started. Like our player for our snake or our obstacle, we're going to have a physics process function. So again, this is just a function that runs every frame and it gives us the amount of time that has run since the last frame. And we can use this to make calculations about what we want to do with the object or body. And so we're going to first check, is it still alive? So if is alive and is moving. So if we're not moving anymore, we don't really need to do the physics process. So we'll check both of those things. And so if both of those things are true, we'll do our movement update. And we'll add that delta argument in there so that we know how much time has passed since the last movement. So then we need to define our movement update. So I'll say func movement update. And we have the amount of time passed in there as well. Now we just want to add the movement to the snake. And so we're going to start with the gravity. So the snake is like the player in that it has physics and it acts in the physical world. So we'll say velocity.y plus equals gravity. And just like our player, we're going to want to multiply our gravity by the time. So the next thing we want to do is move our snakes across the platform. So they're just going to have this default movement. You could think of this as like a really, really dumb, simple AI, but we're essentially making the snakes move by themselves. So let's make this make sure the snake is on the floor so it can fall without moving first. So we'll say if is on floor. So if the snake happens to be falling, we won't be also moving. And let's say velocity dot x equals speed. And then we'll use our same velocity equals move and slide function that we moved for the player. So remember, this just takes the velocity and we need a vector pointing up. And that should actually do everything we need for the snakes to start moving. Let's take a look at that. And so, yeah, you can see the snakes are moving, but there's a few issues here. Let's look at that again. So the snakes fall and then they just fall off the side of the platform. And so there's a few things we need to do to make sure that the snakes don't fall off the platform. But before we do that, let's also play the snakes animation. So we want to play the walk animation if the snake is walking. So we'll use something similar to what we did with the player. We'll say if, and I'm going to get the absolute value of the x velocity. So what that basically means, absolute value is the same positive and negative. So if the snake is moving right or left, it'll still be moving. And so then we want to play the walk animation. So I'm going to say if the absolute value of the velocity of x is greater than one, then we want to do animated sprite dot play and we want to play our walk animation. And if it's not, at this point, we can just play the idle animation. So if it's not moving, we want to have a default here. So we'll just say play and idle. So now we should see our snakes walking animation. And that looks pretty good. They're still falling off the platform. We'll fix that next. We want the snake to have a specific direction. So you can see all the snakes are moving in one direction but we might want different snakes to be going in different directions at the beginning of the scene. So let's make another export variable. Let's say export variable and direction. So the snakes are currently moving to the right, but most of my snakes will probably want going to the left since my player is mostly going to the right. It really depends on the directionality of your game. All of these things can change based on what you want to do with your game. But I'm going to set the default direction to negative one. And so that will make my player go to the left. So I'm going to say default negative one is left and one will be right. And what we'll do to make that work is we'll multiply speed times the direction. So we'll say speed times direction. So if the speed is 50 times negative one, that will go negative 50 each frame. And then the opposite for positive one. If you set it to zero because we're using multiplication, then it won't move at all. So be careful about that. But now let's take one of our, let's take our snake in the middle and change the direction to one and watch that again. 
So now we see the middle snake goes to the right and the other two snakes go to the left. So that's pretty cool, but then we also need to update our sprite animation, don't we? We need to flip the sprite based on which direction it should be going. And we actually need to do that from the very beginning. So what we can do is add in our ready function. So we'll go back up here above the physics process function and I'll say func underscore ready. So this is our Godot function that gets called at the beginning of the scene. And so we'll set the animated sprites flip value. So let's go to our snake guy and remember there's the flip h value on the animated sprite to flip the direction of the sprite and so what we'll do is we'll essentially say animated sprite dot flip h and so what we want to do here is basically say if the direction is one we need to flip the snake because the snake we can see down here in the animation is actually facing left and there's a cool easy way to do this is we can just use the equals assignment and then we can actually say direction double equals one. So what Godot is gonna do is evaluate this first. So if the direction is one, it's going right, and then flip H will be true. And so we'll flip the snake around. If direction is negative one, then this will be false. So flip H will be false. And so it'll stay the default when it's facing left. So that's a cool, simple way to set that up. So let's take a look at that real quick. And so now we can see our snakes are facing in the direction that they're going. So the next thing we have to do, which is a little bit more complicated, is figure out how to keep the snakes on the platform. So you might want the snakes to fall off the platform. That might work if you have like a lot of other platforms, but we also wanna have the option of having the snake kind of go back and forth like a little path. And so let's create a variable first to allow the player to choose the option. So we'll say export var and we'll say stay on platform and we'll default this to true. And so if this is true, we want the snake to detect when they reach the edge of the platform and then turn around. This is a little bit more complicated to set up, but it's relatively easy for us to do. So let's go back to our snake scene and I'm gonna turn on my platform check. And this is a ray cast and a ray cast is essentially a simpler collider. So let's take a look at what that means. So sometimes you have collision shapes and there's like a whole box and a whole other box or maybe a circle. And you actually have to do a lot of calculations to figure out like, is this box inside here? Is this thing in here? If we wanna do something a little bit simpler, we can use what's called a raycast. So we can choose a point and then we can draw an arrow out from that point and then we can decide when is it interacting with different parts of our shapes. And so we'll do something similar with our snake. So we have our snake here, and then we have our platform down here. And we can use a little raycast to say, is the snake on top of a platform? So as long as this raycast is interacting with a platform, we know the snake's on top of the platform. The problem is if the snake is walking along and they get to be like here, they're gonna fall off the platform. And we actually need them to turn around before they start to fall off because gravity will pull them down. So what we can do is use this raycast. We only have one, but we're actually gonna move it back and forth. So if the snake is moving this way, we're gonna move the raycast over here. And so actually what will happen is when the raycast says, uh-oh, there's no platform over here, that's when we'll tell the snake to go back this way and we'll move the raycast back here. So then when the snake is walking over here again, the raycast will be over here. And as soon as it says, hey, there's no platform over here, then the snake will turn around. So it's a pretty simple solution. It's a little tricky to set up, but we've got our raycast here and we're gonna call it platform check. And so we need to remember that because we're about to use it in our code. You could change the name here or you could use an export or something like that, but it's pretty easy just to use that dollar sign and just reference the platform check. So if the snake is to the left, we'll move the platform check over to the left. And so what we wanna do, and this is a little complicated, but essentially the easiest way to know when the snake is gonna fall off the platform is by looking at the edge of this collider. And there's a pretty easy way to do that in code. We're just gonna get the radius of this shape. So that only works because this is a circle. If you have a different shape, you would need a different method for finding that space. And if you do, let me know, we can figure it out in the code, it's not too hard. But since this is a circle, it's pretty easy to know what is this radius, and we're just gonna set this raycast to that radius but we also need to know the direction. We can use the dollar sign to get my platform check. And let's say we're gonna move our raycast in front of collider. 
So we're going to say the platform check, and then we'll say dot position dot X. So this is just the horizontal position. So we're going to move it either to the right or to the left. We'll set that equal to direction. Okay, so we know the direction of the snake is either one or negative one. We already have that. And then we're going to multiply that direction by the collider. So I'm going to say dollar sign dot collider. And that's going to give us this collider, which is our circle shape here. So we'll say collider dot shape dot get radius. And so this is just a simple way of knowing what is the radius of the circle. And then we're going to move that platform check to the edge of that radius. So the next thing that we're going to set up, and we're going to do this in our movement update, is we're going to check to see if the snake is about to leave the platform. And we're going to say, if stay on platform. First, we want to make sure that the designer actually wants the snake to stay on the platform. So if stay on platform. And then we're going to say, if not. And we're going to grab our platform check. And then just say, is colliding. And so we, that's basically all we need to know. We can also look at the platform check and see that the collision mask is set up for the platform. So this raycast is only going to detect things that are on that platform. And it doesn't actually have its own layer because it's just checking for collisions. Things cannot collide with the raycast. So it's just a simple collision checker. So if it's colliding, then we're fine, we're on the platform. If it's not colliding, so if we say if not platform is colliding, then we just wanna flip the direction of the snake. And that's really easy to do. We have this direction variable. So we're just gonna multiply it by itself direction times negative one. And so essentially what that's saying is it's gonna be the opposite. If the direction is one and we multiply by negative one, we get negative one. So if it's going one to the right and we want it to go left, we just multiply it by negative one. If it's going to the left, negative one, and we multiply it by negative one, that gives us one. You'll see this a lot in coding, especially for things with physics movement. We just want to flip directions. And so that's a really easy way to do it. And then we're also going to flip our animated sprite. And so I can actually literally just copy and paste this line from line 15 and paste it down here. Because it's the exact same thing, we want the animated sprite flip H to match the direction. The last thing we want to do is reset our platform check. So I'm going to grab that again. And it's it's the same exact line. We're just setting it to the direction times the radius of the collider. And so let's make sure this works. So I'm going to go back to 2D, go back to my default scene, and choose my snake. And let's have one fall off the platform. So let's actually take this snake. And we'll see if we can he can make it to the other platform. So we'll set his direction to 1, and we'll say stay don't stay on platform. Let's see if he makes it. And I got an error because I misspelled is colliding. Okay, sorry about that. Just misspelled that. Let's try that again. Okay, that snake didn't make it. But notice our other two snakes are going back and forth. That works pretty well. Let's see if we can get our other snake over. Let's increase his speed to 100. Let's just see if that gets him all the way to the platform. Almost. Okay, let's try 200. It probably isn't the best use of time for this demo, but there we go. Okay, so the snake can make it to the other platform. Let's just reset that and let's reset stay on platform. So they're all going to wiggle back and forth on the platforms. And that's probably what you want to do if you have it set up like this. Another thing that you might have is like a wall. In the level design lab, I added a bunch of walls. And so we can also check for that. I'm not going to build a wall here, but I'm just going to check on here. I'm just going to add it in here. So we're going to say, if stay on platform, if not on platform, or is on wall. And this is a Godot thing. It'll tell us if it's hitting a wall. I'm not exactly sure what its definition for a wall is, but I think it's pretty good. So let's just leave that in there. We're not going to test it right now, but I think it will be useful for the future. So that's everything that we need to do to set up the movement for the obstacles. So now let's set up the interactions between the obstacles and the player. Let's take a look at each one of these colliders and then set them up to work with the player. So the first collider is the hit. And this is if the snake gets hit by the player. So notice that it's kind of where the snake's head is. It's OK for this collider to overlap with the body collider but we don't want it to overlap with the attack collider because we don't want the snake to attack the player and get killed at the same time. So we just have to make sure the hit and the attack don't overlap. So I'm going to put the hit up at the top of the head 
And you can make it smaller or larger depending on how difficult you want it to be for the player to find it. Like if I want it easy for the player to kill the snake, I could make it really big. So pretty much anywhere on the top of the snake. If I wanted to make it a little harder, I can overlap just with the snake's head. And your enemy might have more parts to them. It might be more complex. It might be a different shape. You can really move this collider around to do whatever you want. So then we just have to connect this collider to our code. So notice there's already a signal here in the default setup. So let's delete that and then go back. So this is body entered. This is for the player again. And this one, we can double click, add it to the obstacle moving on hit body entered for the function is fine. This function is only going to happen when the player hits the snake. So we don't really need to worry about it being called other things. So I'm just going to click connect. And essentially what we want to do here is just kill the snake. One thing that's a little tricky is that we might have multiple possibilities for the snake getting killed. So we don't want to put all of our code to kill the snake right here. We may want to kill the snake with projectiles in the future. So we're just going to say if the snake is alive. And we have to check this first because we don't want to kill the snake twice. We don't want to trigger the same animation twice. We don't want to have the, a snake be killed more than once. So we would need to check if the snake is still alive first because once the player jumps on the snake, they may still be in that collide. So if they are alive, we're going to call a function called hit. And so now we can define that function. So let's put a comment here first. So snake hit by player or projectile and we'll add that in a future lab and so if that happens we're going to call this hit function so we'll say func hit so now we'll say is alive equals false so the movement update will stop and we'll know that the snake is no longer alive then we'll play the dies animation so i'll say animated sprite dot play and we'll play the dies animation and then we're also going to play the dies sound so i'll say dies sound dot play if you don't have the die sound, just skip that line or comment it out. So let's see if that works. Let's go to default scene. So first we got to jump our player over here. And then if we hit the snake's head, it does die. So that's pretty good. We may want to remove the snake from the scene, depending on how gory your game is. We don't want to have our enemy's body still there. So we can look at how to remove that. And I'm going to make the player a little bit faster. I should have set 200 as the default speed from the beginning. So let's go back to our obstacle moving. And so our animated sprite, notice that that also has a signal. Okay, but it's not connected. So let's connect that. So we'll go to animation finish. So when the dies animation plays, we want to remove the snake. So I'm going to double click on animation finish, go to obstacle moving. That's going to generate the animated sprite animation finish method for me. It's all the way down here because I made those spaces. Let's bring it back up. And what we want to do is make sure that the snake is actually dead before we remove it. You could have it set up so that you have to hit the snake multiple times. So we'll say if not is alive, then we'll do our QUE UE underscore free Q free. This just removes the snake from the scene. So let's try that now. Oops. OK, so let's get, take our player. And we don't actually have to do anything because the snake can't hit the player at this point. So we, as long as we, whoops, as long as we go through that obstacle, it kills the snake. And we can see that the snake has been removed. So that looks pretty good. So the next thing we have to do is have the snake attack the player. So let's go back to our scene and let's turn on the attack collision shape. And so this collider, well, let's lock up my animated sprite again. So for this collider, we want it to be inside the art. This is probably too big because we want it to look like the player is actually getting hit by the snake. But the snake does have this little attack animation. So we can take a look at that. Let's change the animation to attack. And you can see the attack area is actually down kind of here. So again, this depends on where your animation is. But I could probably move it out to about here. And that would still be pretty realistic. So as long as it's not overlapping with the head, you can see the way this is set up. It's going to be a lot easier for the player to kill the snake by jumping on it than it is for the snake to actually get to the player. So this kind of maybe advantages the player a little bit, but you can test this 
and see what you come up with. So now we need to set up our code for the attack to happen. So I'm going to go to my events again in the node and I have this body entered. That's the player. So let's disconnect it and reconnect it and choose the obstacle moving again. This is on attack body entered and that looks good. That's what we want. And so in this case, what we want to do, let's move this up a bit, is have the snake attack the player. So let's say first, if is alive. So we want our snake to be alive. Again, this collision could happen after the player has already killed the snake. So we don't want to keep attacking the player once the snake is dead. We also want to make sure that the player is alive. We don't want the snake to be attacking a dead player. So we can say body dot is alive. So we'll check to make sure both the player and snake are alive. And then we'll play the attack animation. So we'll say animated sprite dot play attack. And we'll say is moving equals false. So we don't want the snake to keep moving around. And then we'll also finally do our obstacle collision that we wrote for the player controller. So we'll say body, which is a player dot obstacle collision. And so that should do the same thing, remove a life from the player. And then the last thing we want to do is just play our hit sound. So we have a sound for the death and for hitting with the snake. Again, if you don't have the sound, just skip that part. So let's go to our default scene. Now our snake should be able to kill our player. Oh, I spelled hit sound wrong. Let's try that again. Okay, I killed the snake. Let's go up here. Okay, so he attacked me. Oh, and then he keeps attacking me. So we need to actually reset some stuff. So once we start playing the attack animation and set is moving to false, then the snake's not gonna attack again. So we can use our same on animated sprite finished. So this one, now we can say if the snake was just attacking, so we can say if, let's move this to another line. So let's say if animated sprite dot animation equals attack. So if the snake was just attacking, then we can say is moving back to true. So this will make the snake start moving again. Um, and that will trigger the other animations. And I think that's all we need to say there. Um, so let's give that a try. So let's go over here this time. So the snake's going to attack me and then, oh, and then it died. So once I got into the attack collision, the snake actually dies, but let's see if I can get killed by hitting three snakes. Okay. Okay. So now I died. So one thing I noticed is that the snake only hits me when it's moving to the left. And I realized that has to do with the way that the collider is set up. So we have to remember that we are flipping the art when the snake moves. So when the snake changes directions, we're flipping the art, but we aren't flipping that collider. So one thing we want to make sure to do is take the attack collider and make sure it goes beyond the kinematic body of the snake. Another thing that we can change here earlier, we removed the player from the snake's mask for the kinematic body. That means that the snake can pass through the player and then it gets killed by the player when it hits the head. But if the player runs into the kinematic body, the circle in the back here, then it will not hit the hitbox for the snake. So let's see what this looks like. So now the snake can hit us. And it also hits us in both directions now. So another thing that we might want to do, this is a little bit of a tangent, so I might not keep this in the code, but we might want the snake to turn towards the player because if the player now hits the snake in the back, it's going to look like it's just getting hit by the snake tail, but we could actually turn the direction of the snake. We already have most of the code to change the direction. So now we can just test the direction of the snake and see if it's facing the player or not. What we're going to do, we know the position of the snake, that's position.x, and we know the position of the player because we have the body. So the position of the player is body.position.x, and we can get the relative position by subtracting one from the other. If our player is here and their position is 100, and the snake is here and their position is 50. If the snake direction should be right, it should be positive one. And so 100 minus 50 is 50. That's a positive number. And we can use something in math called sine. And sine takes a number and tells you whether it's positive or negative. So if we put 50 into sine, we're going to get one. 
On the other hand, if our player was over here, so let's say our player was like 10, the snake direction should actually be negative one. And if we do 10 minus 50, so player minus snake, we'll get negative 40. And if we do sine of negative 40, we'll get negative one. So that's a quick way to test the direction. And so what I'll do is say if sine body.position.x minus position.x. So again, the player x position minus the snake x position. We get whatever the value of that. And then we use math function called sine, and that'll tell us one or negative one. And if that is not equal to the direction of the snake, so that's just one or negative one, then we can flip the snake around. And to flip the snake around, we just have to do the three things that we did right here. So I should probably put this into a different function at this point, but I don't know if I'm gonna keep this in the code. So I'm just gonna copy this and paste it so we can just check it real quick, see if it works. So let's go down here and we have to hit the back of the snake. So let's get over here and there. Now we can see the snake changes direction if we hit the snake in the back. So that looks a lot more realistic. There is a little glitch here now where I've died, but the snake is still alive and they're kind of stuck in this little area, but that's only gonna happen in that very specific situation. So I'm gonna kind of ignore that. Anyway, that was a little bit of a tangent. I didn't have that in my original script. So if that's something that you wanna add, feel free to include that. I'm gonna get rid of it for now and leave it the way that it was originally set up. So there's just one bit of functionality left to do. I also have a functionality where the snake doesn't move until it detects the player. So that's what this detect collider is doing. And really you could do anything you want with this. Um, I'm gonna unlock it and lock up my other colliders. So I could take this and I could put it just in front of where the snake can see. I could have put it behind the snake. I could make it really wide so the snake can look in any direction. But I kind of have just this like default thing where if you move close to the snake, the snake is gonna notice where you are. And this is basically so that when the player enters the platform, that's when the snake will notice them. In order for that to work, we don't want the snake to be moving at the very beginning. And the way that we can set that up is just add another variable to say, do we want this detect on player functionality to work? So you could skip this whole part if you don't need this, but if you want something like this or you want some other functionality, this is a way that you could do it. So let's make another export var and we'll say detect on player and we'll default this one to false. So we'll have to set this one to true in the editor. So then if we go back to our scene, let's choose a snake. So I'll choose this one here and I'll set detect on player. And so now we wanna say basically you shouldn't be moving when the scene starts. So let's go back to our script and in the ready function we'll say if detect on player then is moving equals false. So if the snake is supposed to wait for the player, then we won't start moving the snake. So then the next thing we need to do is just connect the detect collision shape to our code. So we'll go over to the nodes, we'll remove this on body entered and then add it again. So we'll go to obstacle moving on detect body entered, that works, let's do connect. And so here, if the player enters that area, again, we need to check to make sure that the snake is alive. So we'll say if is alive and detect on player. Okay, so if those two things are true, then we'll say is moving to true. So we don't really have to do anything else, we just get the obstacle moving. So let's go back to our default scene and try this out. Okay, so I had a bit of an error there, but I figured out what the issue was. I still have this is animated sprite animation on attack is moving equals true. And the reason that that was triggering is because my animated sprite is set to attack. So that's something that you have to be careful about in your code. I could just set the animation to idle or I can set it here. Now we have our snake not moving. So now if I enter this area, now the snake starts to move. So that's basically what I want to happen there. There's a few things that I could do definitely to improve that, but I think that kind of captures the basic idea. So now that we've got our snakes moving around in our scene, let's do a little documentation. So this would be a good chance to do some video since there are some moving animations but I'm just going to take a couple screenshots and I'll post those. So I'm going to preview the scene and let's just take a screenshot of our snakes moving around. And then we can go over here 
And it's gonna be kind of hard to take a screenshot of other things happening, but we can just show maybe the player getting hit or dying or something like that. But just get a couple screenshots and then we're ready to post on the open lab. So I'm gonna close Godot and let's make a new post on the open lab. So I'll go to new post and I'll find my enemies category. So there we go. And let's just say something real quick. I added moving enemies into Godot. If you wanna include anything else that you learned or experimented with here, go for it. And if you did something as a collaboration or a bonus, also include that in your documentation. Um, so now I'm just gonna drag in these screenshots. And so I'm just gonna go drag these in, pretty simple. And let's preview. And that looks pretty good. We've got a few different shots of how our enemies look. So I'm gonna close that and go ahead and publish.